Hello, today we're going to show you how to reproduce your orchid using the simulation of the orchid's natural and organic vegetative reproductive process. This process bypasses the use of cakey or hormonal paste in order to successfully achieve nine times out of 10 the reproduction of your orchid instead of encouraging the growth of a new bloom. You may have seen online or read on the internet that in order to reproduce your orchid, you must keep the stem intact to the originating orchid and apply cakey paste to the nodes. I argue that this method will likely, 9 times out of 10, yield the production of new blooms instead of cakeys or young orchids that you can then transport into a new pot and cultivate as an entirely new plant. As such, what you want to do is to take a stem, cut it beneath the blooms, and ensure that the stems contain healthy nodes. As you see here, I have three such stems. You may wish to remove the protective cover from the nodes, but I have found that this does not necessarily achieve anything. So you can keep them intact and proceed to simulate the orchid's natural vegetative environment in order to encourage growth. This is an excellent method that you can recreate at home without using cakey paste or hormonal paste to encourage growth. This will more likely than not yield the desired result of reproducing your orchid instead of encouraging new blooms or flower spikes. I'm going to show you how to do this method and how to ensure that you are successful in reproducing your desired orchid. So as you see here, I have a tall vase and I'm going to fill that base with some water. I'm going to be using two types of moss, uh, either sphagnum or hypnum moss, in order to recreate the orchid's natural substrate. As you see, you're going to need materials that are found around the home and you do not need to use hormonal paste, which unfortunately does carry side effects such as bacterial growth and future orchid illnesses. To begin, you're going to take your container. I'm using a vase, but if you have a bottle of water, an empty water bottle, or any other container that can be sealed, you can use that as well. In nature, because orchids are rational plants, if the orchid stem is still attached to the orchid, it does not feel the need to reproduce. In order for an orchid to reproduce, the stem would have to be removed and land on substrate in order to encourage growth. As you see here, we are working with moss, but in nature, the new orchid stem with nodes would often land on bark, moss, and at that point, with a perfect climate, it would begin to reproduce. The goal here is to simulate that environment as closely as possible in order to encourage that new growth. You're going to take some moss and you're going to wrap it around your stems, which you have removed from your existing orchid. You want to ensure that the nodes are healthy, that the orchid is healthy, and that you have a really good initiating base to work with. Because moss carries with it antibacterial properties and it is also an orchid's food source, you want to ensure that you are taking a large handful and tightly wrapping it around your stems and nodes. So as you see here, I'm just going to be tightly wrapping it around in order to provide the orchid with the food source that it needs to encourage this new growth. These types of mosses are sphagnum and hypnum moss or sheet moss that you can find in your vicinity or purchase. So as you see here, I'm just going to go ahead and gently lower the stems into the water, ensuring that the orchid has access to water and a food source to propagate itself. The next step is to cover the neck of the container with some perforated plastic. This will initially mimic a greenhouse effect in your own home. 
So I'm going to lightly mist the inside of the container just to create additional humidity. The next step is to, of course, take some perforated plastic. You want to ensure that the plastic has tiny perforations or holes so that oxygen can enter and any gas produced can exit. You want to ensure that while you are sealing the heat and moisture in, you still have that movement of air and release as well. This plastic can be found at a floral store, usually bunches of flowers are wrapped in this perforated plastic, but you can also likely find it in your grocery store as vegetables and fruits can sometimes also be wrapped in this perforated plastic as well. Then you're going to seal this perforated plastic around the neck of your container in order to capture that heat and moisture. Once the step is completed, you want to put this container on in a warm space, for example, your windowsill. Ideally, you want to achieve a temperature of 25, 26 degrees Celsius and over. So a windowsill or a very warm area of your home would be ideal for this. As you see here, I am simply sealing the plastic around the neck and I have recreated this greenhouse effect by trapping it the heat and moisture, but also encouraging circulation. So let's have a look at one of our already pre-prepared stems and nodes just to see how they're doing. This is from three weeks ago. And as you can see by examining the nodes, you already have new growth. These are budding new orchids. You can tell the difference between budding new orchids and blooms by inspecting closely the type of growth that is forming. Blooms are typically round and budding new orchids have a spiky tip. These buds are going to turn into leaves and roots with a little bit more time and eventually you will be able to remove and repot the orchid as a brand new plant. As you see here, I'm just examining just to ensure that the desired growth is being achieved. And I can tell right away that these are brand new baby orchids and not new blooms. So I'm just going to place these back into this vase and I'm going to reseal it and let it continue growing. So in the meantime, I'm going to examine this other vase that I have prepared. This is from about two months, two and a half months ago. As you see, we have brand new leaves and roots. The roots are trying to reach downward to reach the food source or the moss. But as you see, this is a brand new growth. This is a brand new baby orchid. And although it is very young and delicate, at this point you can remove it from the stem and repot it into new substrate so that it can grow autonomously from its mother stem. So I'm just going to gently remove it and inspect it just to ensure that it is strong enough and ready enough to be repotted. I'm going to cut beneath it to ensure that there's still a little bit of a stem left so that I'm not damaging or injuring the baby orchid. And I'm going to transport this orchid into a new pot that I have prepared with substrate and moss and this is a technique that is used in greenhouse growers to help create a hospitable environment for baby orchids to grow. So as you see here, I'm just cutting a little bit underneath the new bloom and I'm going to be placing it into this brand new pot filled with substrate. So as you see here, it is very easy. It takes a little bit of time and patience, but overall you bypass the use of hormonal paste. You bypass the possibility of encouraging new blooms instead of new baby orchid growths. And you are ensuring successful reproduction so long as your orchid is healthy, so long as you have healthy nodes, and you can simulate this greenhouse environment. This is as close as possible to the authentic environment in which an orchid would reproduce. This can be very easily simulated at home and this gives you the opportunity to reproduce a desired orchid and it allows you to be successful at that as well instead of wasting your time and possibly encouraging the growth of blooms instead of new cakeys or baby orchids.
So as you see here, this is a very easy method. I wish you the best of luck in propagating your new orchid, and please leave any questions and comments below.